I'm going to tell you a little bit about symbiota. Symbiota is, is a lot more complicated than what I can tell you today, but I hope I can give you an overall picture and point you in the direction uh, to places where you can learn more information and the people to contact to learn more information. So symbiota is both a specimen database and a biodiversity portal. Uh, those are two very different things with different features. So the URL for Symbiota is here at the top. Um, as a package, as a software package, Symbiota is a collection of open source and web-based tools designed to integrate biological data and knowledge from the community and aid uh, the contributing biologists and those in the general community with establishing specimen-based virtual floras and faunas. And it's the brainchild of, of primarily these three people here. Um, one at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, Arizona State, and Arizona State. Ed Gilbert here is the lead developer on it. Um, and you can contact them by way of this URL at the bottom of the page. So in terms of Symbiota being an active portal, by portal I mean it's a means through which um, end users can access bio collections data through the web. Um, so in this case, anyone who's installed Symbiota or is using Symbiota has a portal through which they display their data. And um, the data is displayed in collections. And these collections are communities of people and organizations who coalesce their data and make it available through one portal online. So there's one single user interface and many data sets available through that one um, interface. So many institutions collections. And usually the portals are either geographic in scope or taxonomic in, in scope and sometimes both. So if you're interested in studying or, or providing a data portal for the lichens of North America, you could generate a portal and have every collection in North America if they want submit data to this portal. Um, every instance of Symbiota is based on the same framework or architecture, so every web uh, interface looks more or less the same but it's customizable. So if you have the skills or, or have people on staff who have the skills, you can customize it to make it look a little bit more representative uh, as you'd like. And that's based on some web, uh, web information there. And you can see um, some examples of, of live Symbiota nodes by following the link at the bottom. So any one end user, when they go to a Symbiota portal, will see three functions or, or, or be able to access the underlying specimen database in three ways. One is simply to access the database. They can query the database for every uh, bit of collection information you might be interested in searching, be it collector, geography, taxonomy, etc. So you can search the entire database and pull uh, retrieve records that have those query parameters in place. Um, Secondly, it, it provides end users with the capability of creating biodiversity inventories. So based on this backbone of specimen data, you can create floras or floristic um, collections of specimen records that occur within a, a particular geography or geographic region and make searchable species lists based on that. And then third, if you've supplied the, the database with this kind of information, uh, species description level information, you can mark up those species descriptions and create um, interactive keys so that end users out in the field not knowing what they have in hand can go to the appropriate portal, check all of the morphological characters that are relevant and hopefully uh, identify whatever they're looking at to species. But again, this is all based on the, the specific specimen data sets that are available through the portal. So if the specimen data doesn't exist, you can't make a map referring to those. Um, but in addition to those three functionalities, you can also view images, be they field images or, or voucher specimen images. You can make live dynamic distribution maps um, showing all of the specimens available. And again, based on the criteria you may have selected above in the specimen search engine, see a map of all of those species or specimens. And likewise, see descriptions and taxonomy. <coughs> So to give you um, a better idea of what a symbi symbiota portal might include, um, here are three. One uh, is a, these three are, are part of a advancing the digitization of biodiversity collections program. So they both started around two years ago um, and have maybe four or five years to complete their efforts. Um, so the first is a, the lichen, the consortium of, of North American lichen herbaria, which includes 36 different institutions, each with lichen uh, specimen data, pooling them all together in, into the um, lichen portal 
and then having the end user be able to query 900,000 records. Instead of going to this herbarium's website, this herbarium's website, and search for the records relevant there and over here, they get to view them and see them all in one place and compare them um, that way. But it's worth saying that each institution's collection is kept separate uh, from the others in the portal. So they are, um, they're separate but equal, if you will. Um, so another example is the Bryophyte Consortium with 28 different institutions contributing data amounting to over 1 million specimen records. And then the Macrofungi Collection Consortium with 23 and over 680,000 er, yeah, 680, records. And again with images of uh, specimens in the field, uh, voucher specimens, illustrations, etc. Anything that reinforces uh, or is related to the specimen record. From a, a content management perspective or from a collection management perspective, um, Symbiota might be somewhat limited um, unless you have the skills to operate a MySQL database. Um, so to the public, the, the interface is read-only. You cannot change anything. You can only read and absorb the information. Um, but if you have the, the password and the login information, you can access the database behind the scenes, at least uh, with a format like this. So it's browser-based, so you do have to have inter internet connection in order to access the database. So the database is located on one server at one institution, and all the contributing uh, institutions access the data on that one server. Uh, which is also nice, because if you're traveling, you can always look at your data um, and update your data. And there's no software to install. It's all available um, instantly. Uh, and in addition, because it's web-based, there are other web-based tools that are integrated into it right at the click of an icon in the middle of the page. So in terms of, of putting any existing data you may have into Symbiota, you, you have two options. One is to capture a live shot and have that be, or a snapshot, what we call a, a moment of your data in time uh, that's never to be updated again and just make it available through the portal and researchers will always have access to it, but it'll never be updated in terms of determinations, etc. Or you can have Symbiota act as your living database, um, where you make updates for uh, identifications, you add additional information across time. And because it's MySQL, it's, it enables expansion. Uh, from a personal specimen management, just like Brahms, it too has the ability to create labels for you. So if you don't already have a system in place for creating standardized herbarium specimen labels or other uh, collection labels, this will do that for you. Um, I neglected to mention that there are already, in the eight existing portals already, there are a number of different organismal groups, from insects to mammals to plants, lichens, etc. Um, you can access the database behind the scenes and manage your data that way. You can print labels and, of course, all of the pros for having it be web-based. If you were to use Symbiota as a, a, data, a means of data capture, you can view the image right alongside the fields into which you're, you're entering your data. So the Tritrophic Digitization Project, of which I've been a part for the last two years, found Symbiota to be a perfect fit for us in that we had records that needed data the image to go with the record that needed data, and down at the bottom, the option to optical, optically character recognize the image to find the text in the image. So I'll go over that in just a second. But anyway, it had all three things in one package. So in this case, I can see this is an insect label, I believe, yeah? So um, you can enter the information as you see it in the image very easily. Um, and likewise, a really neat feature is that as you're entering the collector collection number date, the database will automatically query all of the other data in, in the existing um, parallel collections to let you know if there are any duplicates exist. And this is really important for herbarium specimens when um, collectors will collect many specimens of one individual and distribute them to several herbaria. There's no need to duplicate the effort of transcribing the collection label information if one institution in the portal has already done that. So that information is available to everyone who is a member of the portal. So when that pops up, you just autofill all of the data, verifying, of course, against the collection label data, uh, collection label image. Uh, 